Hey friends, and welcome back to Let's Find Out About It. I hope you enjoyed reading Chameleon's Colors for the second time with Ms. Ari. I've told you all about a thousand times that this is one of my favorite Jumpstart books, so I was happy to bring it back to you all. Um, I also saw that you were able to retell the story, so shout out to you all for doing such a good job with that. Now, last time on Let's Find Out About It, we talked about camouflage. We're going to continue to talk about that a little bit more today. But before we get into the new information, I have a question for you all, right? So, my first question for you all is, have you ever played hide and seek before? Yes, I bet you play a hide and seek a lot. I remember when I was younger, I used to play hide and seek a whole lot. <clears throat> if you have not played hide and seek before, hide and seek is a game where some people have to go hide in a good spot where they cannot be seen. And then another person has to come and try to find them. Um, so, I'm bringing up hide and seek because my second question is, what are some strategies or some things that you all like to do so you don't get caught when you're playing? How do you ensure that you have the best hiding uh, spot possible? Okay. Okay. So I know there were a couple different things that I like to do when I used to play hide and seek. The first thing I like to do is try to find a spot where I was completely covered. So if you walk past, you couldn't even find me. But we know that sometimes that doesn't always exist. So if I couldn't be completely covered, I try to find a spot where I blended into, right? The parts of me that were not covered were super hard to see because I was camouflaged into my surroundings. Now, I'm bringing this up because the game Hide and Seek is going to help you understand the topic that we're going to talk about today, right? We're going to continue talking about animals and their camouflage. Now, animals don't play hide and seek, but they do something very similar, right? There are some animals who have to hide or camouflage into surroundings so other animals don't eat them. So it's the same thing. You don't want to be seen, so you have to find the best surrounding for you to camouflage or hide into. <clears throat> we talked about we talked last time how certain animals have certain coats and coverings that match their surroundings and it makes it harder for other animals to see them. You may remember this example of an owl. We see that the owl has um, feathers that are like white, a little bit of brown with some gray in there as well. And it is matching the trunk of this tree very well. You can, you can barely see it because it's the same color as the bark on the tree. Now, for animals to be hidden, they have to be the same color or very similar color to their surroundings, right? If they're not hidden, then they can be kind of dangerous for them. It can be a little unsafe because that animal that wants to eat them is going to find them super easily. Remember when I had my chameleon and my chameleon was stuck red, right? If I was to put my chameleon on this white background, is it hidden right here? No, it's super easy to see it. So if I was an animal that liked to eat chameleons, I'd be walking past and I'd say, here goes the chameleon right there. I'm going to eat it. But if the chameleon was on my Jumpstart shirt, that's a little harder to see. So if an animal was walking past, they might not see the chameleon. And the chameleon is protected or kept safe away from the danger. So now I'm going to show you two pictures of a zebra. We know that a zebra has a pattern or a repeated thing that is all over its coverings. So this zebra has stripes. It has black and white stripes. So here are the two pictures. In the first picture, you can see that the zebra is just out in the field. Um, its background is green, and we can see the black and white stripes. In the second picture, it looks like the zebra is maybe in between some trees. I see about two different zebras right there. Now, what I want you all to tell me is, in which picture is the zebra protected? In which picture is this zebra safe from any animal that may want to eat it? Yes, I heard a lot of you say that the zebra is safe in the second picture. If an animal was walking past, maybe a lion was walking past, and this lion is hungry, right? Its stomach is growling, the lion says, I want some food today. If a lion's walking past, it may not even see the zebras because it is blended in so well. So the zebra is protected in that picture. But in this first picture, in the green grass, the lion, the lion is walking past, and <gasps> there goes some zebras for me to eat. I'm hungry. Let me get them. So it is kind of dangerous or unsafe in this first picture of the zebras. 
<clears throat> so just like other animals, um, the zebra is just like other animals where it has a special covering that will allow it to stay camouflaged in some areas. Now, we've talked about animals that have coverings to stay camouflaged. So let's talk about some animals that have the opposite. Instead of having camouflage coverings, they have super bright coverings. Their cover their coverings will be bright like my jumpstart shirt or bright like my paintings in the back. So these bright animals are not gonna stay hidden, right? We remember from last time that my chameleon is a bright red and there weren't a lot of places where it could stay hidden. You can see it on the wall, you can see it on my map. In fact, anywhere where it's not red, you're gonna be able to see this chameleon. So, animals that are bright, that are brightly covered, that have bright coverings, they want to be seen because it is a warning. They're warning other animals that want to eat them. And what do you think they're warning them about? Well, these bright coverings or these special coverings they may have is to warn other animals that they are dangerous and to stay away from them. Instead of hiding, they just warn them. They say, hey, I'm dangerous. I may be a little poisonous. You don't want to come near me because I'm going to protect myself. I don't need my surroundings to protect me. I have special things that will allow me to protect myself. So I'm going to put up an example of an animal that you may have seen before that has a special colors to protect it. So right here is a picture of a skunk, right? This skunk is black and white. But I know skunks live in colored, um, brightly covered, brightly colored places like in the woods where there's lots of greens and browns. It's a lot of colors that don't match that skunk. So if someone is walking past, if an animal is walking past and say, hey, I want to eat this skunk, they can see it very easily. But that skunk has that white line down its back. Do you see that white line down the skunk's back? Yeah, so that is a sign to other animals. If you know, maybe you don't know, a skunk is able to raise its tail and shoot out a very stinky smell. And that stinky smell sticks on you. It'll stick on an animal. It'll stick on a human that gets close. And you do not want to get sprayed with this stinky smell from that skunk. And so the skunk has the warning. The first warning is its color. It's a stripe on its back. It's telling other animals, hey, stay away from me. I can protect myself. Then, if the other animals don't listen to that, the skunk is able to raise that spray and is able to get away. There are other animals that are just like that. Maybe they are brightly colored red. Maybe they have spots. And that first warning is to say, hey, you better stay away from me. And then the second warning is whatever they do to protect themselves. So, you're going to learn about some more of these animals with Miss Hannah. Last time you played Where's the Animal? And now you're going to play Where's the Animal with a twist. You want to learn more about these dangerous animals and the different warnings they have with their coverings. After that, I'll see you again and let's find out about it. Bye, friends. Okay, friends. So now we're back with a, another part of Where's the Animal? But this one has a twist because you're not really going to be looking for a hidden animal. So in group meeting with Miss Kalish, you talked about how some animals have bright colors to show that they're dangerous um, and give a warning sign to other animals. So we're going to take a look at that. So first, we're going to do a little throwback to what we did last time. So this is what we were focusing on last time. And so this is a praying mantis and they um, have the same coloration as the leaf and same kind of texture. And so it's hard to tell whether it's a leaf or not. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a leaf bug, but it's the same idea. They camouflage themselves to look like leaves. And so you can see that in the texture and in their coloring. So that is an animal that camouflages themselves for protection and to hunt prey. But now we're going to look at a few animals that have certain coloration to show um, predators that they are dangerous or they shouldn't come near them. It's not worth it. So let's take a look at our first one. So our first one is a skunk. I wanted to move so you guys could see him. It's a skunk and the bold coloring and the coloring of their fur is actually supposed to be a warning sign to um, predators to not get near because 
skunks will release a um, gas and that gas can like stay on um, like a, a human body or an animal body and it can cause irritation. And so skunks have distinct fur coloring um, of the black and white to make sure um, predators don't come near it. And so a lot of um, animals with like coats like this, like mammals, which is animals with fur, um, typically the animals we see like lions and tigers and all that kind of stuff, um, they typically don't have like bold coloring to show that they're dangerous, um, but skunks are one of the few animals that um, do have their coloring as a warning sign uh, to other animals that don't get near them, but also to people. Um, so yeah, so don't get near a skunk. Um, so the next one we're gonna look at is a frog. And so this frog is extremely dangerous. He is poisonous, and so it's a warning sign to predators to don't eat him, don't um, try to pick him up because he will kill you. Um, and so this coloring is to show like, hey, be wary of me. And so a lot of frogs are actually poisonous, and a lot of them have this coloring to like a warning sign. So a lot of really poisonous frogs are really bright colors and a lot of them are found in like more tropical regions so like a rainforest um so yeah so be wary of that but yeah so they have coloring to show when in their habitat to other animals that they are dangerous and so you don't want to get near them and obviously he's not going to be blending in because there's not a lot of like red plants and stuff that are, that he can really blend into. He's going to be pretty, you know, in your face. Okay. The next animal, which I didn't even know about. So it was kind of fun learning about this, but a monarch butterfly is actually poisonous. Like it's not going to hurt you. It's more, it's like what it's eating, but it, um, is poisonous. And so the color the coloring is actually the warning sign. And so I always thought, oh, these are like just so bright and pretty, but the bright orange and pattern of the monarch is actually to show that it's really dangerous to its prey. And so I thought that was kind of cool because that's something I didn't even know. And so you learn something new guys every day. Um, but I thought that was really interesting, but there's also, I don't have them on here because I don't really like snakes. <laughs> they scare me. Um, but also snakes with really bright coloring. That is also just like the frogs. That is also a warning sign that you don't want to get near them. I mean, you probably shouldn't get near snakes anyways, but you really don't want to get near bright colored snakes because that typically means that they are super dangerous and venomous. And so again, when they are in their surroundings, they are basically giving a warning sign that they are dangerous and the other animals shouldn't go near them. I just wanted to make a quick note about the monarch butterfly. Um, he will not, they will not hurt you. So do not be scared of butterflies. It's like it's, if they're ingested by like frogs and stuff that once those things digest the butterfly that they'll become really sick and stuff. So I just don't want you guys to be scared of butterflies. Okay. Friends, I hope you had a super fun time looking over some new animals and their coloring and what it means. And now you'll go back to group meeting with Miss Khalees. Bye. All right, friends. So I hope you enjoyed that activity with Miss Hannah. Now we're just going to wrap up. Let's find out about it so you all can get the centers. I know last time centers were super fun, so you may be super excited to get to that one. So, I'm going to put four pictures up on the screen, and you're not going to be able to see me anymore. But I just need you all to focus on these pictures on the screen, okay? So, in the first picture, we have a picture of a polar bear. And can someone describe what type of covering this polar bear has? Yes, we can see that the polar bear is completely white. It has some type of fur on it. On the other three pictures, you can see three different environments or surroundings, right? The first one, 
Um, the next picture you can see, we're in the desert. There's a whole bunch of sand everywhere. Another picture, we're in the woods. There's some trees, lots of grass. And in the third picture, we seem to be in the Arctic. It's super cold and lots of ice. So my question to you all is, which surrounding do you think the polar bear would be able to camouflage into best? What is the surrounding you think the polar bear comes from? And you'll know that because this is the surrounding that matches the color of the polar bear and um, is the surrounding that will allow the polar bear to camouflage. So which one do you think the polar bear will match into? Yes, the polar bear will match into the Arctic um, surrounding. And why do you think that is? Yes, it's because the Arctic background has lots of white and it matches the color of the polar bear. So the polar bear is able to camouflage and stay away from different predators or animals that may want to eat it. Why do you think the other surroundings don't work? because yeah, these other surroundings have a whole lot of colors that the polar bear does not have. In our desert, we can see that is like a bright yellow. The polar bear is just a completely different color than the snow. And um, in the woods, we can see that it's lots of green everywhere. And our polar bear will stand out so bright against the green of that woods, of that background. So the polar bear will not be protected in these different areas because, the, um, because its fur does not match the surroundings. All right, friends, so thank you for doing one last activity with me before we go on to centers. We learned a whole lot and let's run out about it today, so I wanna just recap on it. So we learned that different animals have coverings and um, fur that'll match their surroundings. And when they blend into the surroundings, they camouflage. And this can make it harder for other animals to see them and it'll keep them protected. We also learned that there are some animals that don't need camouflage. They have super bright colors that serve as a warning. I tell other animals, hey, I'm dangerous. You may want to stay away from me. So thank you for doing those activities with me. I had super fun. I had a whole lot of fun doing this. Let's find out about it. And I will see you all later at Sharing and Goodbye. Bye, bye friends.